Warning, do not listen to this podcast if hearing about freedom and liberty is not legal for you in your community. And if so, you should immediately move to a hipper community. Welcome to the Freedom Fiends Podcast, a weekly web lab where Michael W. Dean and Nima Vadadi cover the punk rockinist, hip hopinist current events, as well as timeless universal truths about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, because there's no such thing as half free. The Freedom Fiends Podcast, available from freedomfiends.com. That's F R E E D O M F E E N S dot com. Freedom Fiends is proudly syndicated by Alterati.com and the Liberty Radio Network. Welcome to the Freedom Fiends Distance Learning Anarchy Series with Freedom Fiends Michael W. Dean. Broadcasting from my windowless bunker. And Nima Vidati. Go, go, Freedom Fiends! Nima Fien, welcome. How are you? This is Michael W. Dean. How are you doing, Nima Dean? Doing good. Doing Nima good. Dean. As Nima. usual. Nima as Dean. per usual, you know, as the kids yeah. say these days, I guess, maybe. I don't know how many kids. <laughs> <laughs> you will, and you'll be like, what are you listening to? Here, let me play you some, <laughs> some old dirty South hip hop. And they'll be like, no, Dad, <laughs> we like this. And it'll be like just noise to you, yeah, to anybody. Yeah. There's actually, yeah. did you ever see that video of... <laughs> Of of uh someone doing this song called it, it, it's this joke about like how pop music degenerates, and it's this female singer who's the song is like it's a guy hitting a bass drum going boom 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 boom, and that's the whole music and her her singing is like this is the song I made oh, this is the this song, is I, the song made. I made yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah that's yeah. funny oh I think I think that's a, a takeoff of uh, that band called the Ting Tings when they, it, mm, it sounds mm. pretty similar to that's not my name mm. I like that's that not song. my name that's actually mm, a pretty good song mm, mm. for something yeah. manufactured in a you know genetic research laboratory it, it is but I think that's the simplistic minimalistic thing they were kind of making yeah. fun of yeah. Although, yeah, that's not my name is pretty catchy. And actually, this is the song I made. This is the song I made. Got stuck in my head for about a week. So <laughs> nice. Probably yeah, longer yeah. than the Ting Ting song. S- simple, simple can be catchy. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I saw Ting Ting's on SNL because they did SNL once, and I'd heard people talk about them, but I hadn't really heard anything except for you know, that's not my name, which is really catchy. And the other song yeah. they played, I forget the name of it, but it was kind of cool to see them do it live because it was pretty simplistic and minimalistic, but. Uh, she had a, a loop player that was operated by foot pedal and uh, and a sequencer, and she actually uh, sampled her voice and like played it back and then sung over it and like layered it like in real time live, which I know a lot of people do, but it was it was cool to see somebody sort of. Well, there's that rapper that. that we like who did that that I turned you on to. Yeah, yeah, What's his Reggie name? Watts. Reggie yeah, Watts. He's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Who does the fuck shit stack? <laughs> fuck shit stack. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Uh, apparently, yeah, he does it with like an NPC and like samples his own voice and makes like the beat out of it. So like he'll sample yeah. himself doing like a, a bass drum sound and then a snare sound and and then he'll he'll play it on the pads like it like you know it's an MP- it's an NPC plays it like he's making a beat but it, he does uh, it with his own sounds. It's awesome. It fills me with awe. Ah. So the name of this it's, episode. It's oh, filling, go ahead. See, that's the thing about awesome is it's almost like a word that's really amazing. Like ah. Oh, and in a word that means, you know, kind of a little bit, some. So why is it like that? Why is it not awful? You know? Awful, full of awe. Yeah, because yeah, awful is bad, but awesome is supposed to be a whole lot of awe, but it's like, why does it have some in it? Now, some how awe. does the non-aggression principle play into that? <laughs> it doesn't. Weird, people can use whatever segue words. ever. No, nah, because I want to get that out of the way, because every episode uh-huh. we're going to do a segment where we analyze. Nah, there's going to be better things we got coming up. So the name of this episode is Why We Torrent, which would be good ah. for SEO. Um, okay. And you asked that question in the last cast, and I listened to the whole cast today. It was great for something that started with me yelling at you and threatening to quit. Uh, and we were doing like our first kind of um, successful rebroadcast of the LRN thing. Now, today we're doing our normal Mon- Tuesday show on Monday, which we're going to release today 
on BitTorrent only to encourage BitTorrenting on our RSS BitTorrent feed, which you can find by going to the freedomfiends.com site and check, clicking on the Torrent Club link at the top. But uh, we, we don't usually broadcast this show. We usually do it, talk a bit, you know, and then release it later, like without an audience. Mm-hmm. But we uh, we quit the curry cast no agenda stream due to technical differences. So yeah. I I decided I tried to call you I couldn't get a hold of you I decided to just go ahead and fiend cast this live and uh, check the stuff check the audio for you know because we, yesterday we were doing a rebroadcast of a show that's radio programmed and everything's set so today I wanted to see how it would work with us doing it on our own feed hundred percent. Because that's what we're going to be doing now on Thursdays. And maybe we, yep. if we like this, we'll start doing it this way. Yeah. So ask me again why we torrent. And you know, right. act like you don't know what it means and what it is okay. and why we yeah. do it. Yeah, I know why. I know why. I and get why it. I'm just, putting so much energy into the, it. Ask me this, that. This, this is learning for you guys. Uh, Michael, why are you so obsessed with telling people to torrent our stuff rather than merely clicking on uh, the iTunes I- icon, subscribing, and getting it automatically delivered to their face? Why do you want them to, to torrent things? Because I want us to be around in a thousand years. And I want us to be around if the government decides to outlaw free speech tomorrow or just CISPA's our site because, you know, we used an icon logo on our link to the iTunes, the iTunes logo on the link to the how to get us on iTunes. Okay. Okay. And if you have absolutely no follow up questions, I'm done. But uh, <laughs> no, I mean, uh, well. Why do you think that that torrenting is the way to do that? Uh, uh, you know, and and what makes you so confident that torrenting is going to be around in a thousand years? Well, it probably won't, but um, I want us to be around in a year, and we might not be if the government has its way, and if the government stopped us tomorrow, you know, banned free speech. I mean, basically, like think about how communism was looked at in the fifties. I could see liberty talk being looked like that in a couple of years and it kind of already is because we use the word anarchist which is not a violent mm-hmm. thing it's just a we want a complete lack of government we want and a complete I, lack of initiated violence yeah which is the and lack i of could see i could see that being outlawed the way communism yeah. you know being a communist in the 50s meant you couldn't work you couldn't get a job uh they'd arrest you for anything they could they'd shut down any way you had to talk to the media mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we're going to get to that way with anarchy within, I mean, we're kind of already there. I mean, look at Brendan Robb. I don't even think he's yeah. an anarchist. He's a constitutionalist, which doesn't mm-hmm. go as far as anarchy. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it could be a f- full circle kind of thing. Cause if you listen to Ben Stone, um, part of what he says is, uh, he likes to go back to the history of when anarchists were sort of the terrorists of the day, uh, back at the turn of the century, you know, bearded early anarchists, ni- you're a bearded early anarchist. 1900s. Uh, yeah. And, and, for the police, it was kind of a, a justification for their own existence. You know, well, we've got all these anarchists around, so you need police here to protect you from them. Uh, and at the same time, it was sort of the same agent provocateur thing. I guess there wasn't an FBI back then, but uh, there were agents of the state that would try to infiltrate these anarchist meetings and often be, you know, <laughs> it'd be the only, all... The only people donating. Yeah, it'd be all goons. Um now, I guess an- that's a different kind of anarchist. Like, I think some of them maybe did have well, those people that in wanted to blow stuff up, or yeah, you know, I that's the way history. Them, but that's the way history tells it. Maybe they weren't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I haven't seen the primary sources, and so, I guess that is something we should probably look at a little bit more because it is interesting. But uh, oh, we should talk about the haymaker ri- riots at some point. I mean, that's definitely a good topic. But so, I mean, you think about like things that have survived through the ages. A lot of times. They survived through the ages because they had something to say to people, which we do, and we people love it. I mean, there's people. I got an email today from uh, Mark Schisler in in Canada, um, who also did some fiend testing for me. And I want people to check this out. I want people to check out kittyfeet.com, k i t t y f e e t dot com, the Anarchy Gumbo site, and check it out from anywhere you have access to the internet, especially if you use different public networks, because uh, mm-hmm. apparently it's blocked in Iran and in mcdonald's so <laughs> i want to know where else it's blocked and if i need yeah. to switch to another domain like anarchy gumbo dot mm-hmm. something mm-hmm. or not i don't want to yes. do that because i'd lose listeners but we would like to know if it's also blocked in burger king and iraq yeah yeah so <laughs> check out kittyfeet.com he did some testing for me and said it's blocked at every mcdonald's public wi-fi he went to and the freedom fiends are not so uh 
I guess it's the word anarchy, or I don't know, that it used to have sex key tags in it or something 15 years ago. I don't know. But I've had that domain for 15 years, so I don't want to get rid of it if I don't have to. I don't want to, I want to use it for the anarchy gumbo. So, yeah. but he wrote to us today and said, the world is full of people who feel that the world has gone mad. How many can discover liberty? Only time will tell. But these people need an introduction. And that's what the fiends are doing. If that's what the fiends are doing, you're doing it well. You know, and this guy discovered uh, liberty, I believe, through us. Or it, yeah. it took him the last mile. You know, the last. Yeah. You know, it's funny. We were talking about the last mile. I don't even know if that was the phrase that that um, Scott Horton used. But he said something, and I extrapolated it to going from minarchi- from statist to minarchist or from statist to libertarian is a journey of a thousand miles going from libertarian or minarchist to anarchist or anarcho capitalist is a journey of one more mile how how come so many people take you know days to go the first thousand miles and then years to go and like grit their teeth to not go the last mile you know an interesting thing is there's a thing called the last mile issue it's with networking like putting in cable all over the world for digital transmission or for whether even analog transmission. And then, you know, now for digital transmission, the last mile is the hardest to wire because that's the one that goes from, you know, the box to people's houses. So there's a thing called the last mile issue or the last Mm -hmm. mile bottleneck. Um, And I guess the, the same thing works in Liberty. So, yeah, I want to be around, you know, in a year, in five years, in 10 years, in a thousand years, even if we're in Gitmo, in 10 years <laughs> literally i want people to be passing us and we joke about it, doing it on pigeons but you know with carrier pigeons but i literally want people burning us burning our stuff burning us burning our media to whatever media exists then mm-hmm. and passing mm-hmm. it on to other people secretly like in the soviet union there was anti-communist propaganda that was like printed in basements and handed out and you could go mm-hmm. to prison for doing it but people still did it but a lot of people have to have the source material to do that. And right. torrenting is the way to do that. Because people, I mean, iTunes literally by default deletes a podcast after you listen to it. You download it, it deletes. You have to click do not auto delete on each episode, not just on the podcast. That won't do it. But on each episode to keep it from auto deleting. Really? Yeah. I don't know. My, mine doesn't do that. <clears throat> it does. Um, mine does if it's been, well, I don't know. You don't listen. Do you I, listen all the way through? Ever to I, guess, I guess, yeah, that's the difference. If I listen to it 100% if you all listen the to the, the last end. second, next time you update, it'll be gone. So yeah, yeah. I want... The thing is, a- I always stop listening after, like when I start hearing the ads at the end, stop listening. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> why you don't lose it. I stop and, listening. You know, our stuff is so good that people generally do listen to the end. So ah. <laughs> <laughs> even our ads are good. Every, every last drop, it's like drinking the milk at the end of the yeah. cereal bowl. Oh, I mean, I it? look at our, our stats on Stitcher, which actually tells you the average minute time that people, you know, mm-hmm. most people go all the way through a, a Freedom Fiends or Anarchy Gumbo. Okay. okay. So, you know, basically tomorrow, for no reason at all, the government could le- could stop all of our websites. They could stop our streaming server. Um, they They could take away my internet and your internet. But if that happened tomorrow, Mm -hmm. there are enough seeds out there already of BitTorrent seeds of people who have all of our stuff on their hard drive. And if that happened, word would get out. You know, I'd go to a pay phone and call in on Free Talk Live and that would be a battle cry to everybody, you know, and then Pete Ayer would reblog it and other people would reblog it and other people who haven't been CISPID yet would talk about it. And all of a sudden, everybody who's even torrented our stuff I think would consider it a challenge of I'm going to torrent this 24 yeah. seven. I would, yeah. if that happened, to, if I was doing mm-hmm. it for someone else, oh, yeah. I'm doing, oh, yeah. I'm doing that for, you know, I I'm seeding, um, not a lot of stuff by other people because, you know, we have to pay for our seed box stuff and people don't have to pay to have it on their own home servers. But, um, Derek J's movie and, uh, um, the book Rats by Claire Wolf. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'm seeding both of those from home part time when I'm not using my computer. Um, if either of those people got thrown in jail, I would start torrenting their stuff 24 seven and telling everybody else to and, and posting the torrent link everywhere. Mm-hmm. Now, the way BitTorrent works is it, it's like it, it turns your computer into a server where other people can download stuff from it without opening you up to everything else on your server. And if you do it right, I mean, people that do it to get movies that they're not supposed to be able to get because, you know, someone claims to own them. If they use a VPN and they use PeerGuard, 
uh, it's pretty much unstoppable unless they find your computer. But the, you don't even have to do that for this if you're only doing the fiends because it's legal. We own it in the copyright sense of the word, and we are giving it away for everyone to, you know, you can't get arrested for copyright violation for doing it with the fiends. So you don't even need a VPN to do it. I use a VPN because my Comcast Cable Town local uh, hick network run by antelopes running on a wheel um, doesn't deal. You know, if I use BitTorrent, without a vpn and you have the same problem right like they they throttle you don't they oh like worse than throttle they like apply the the parking brake it's awful and it's not just what i'm at now on, they put a boot on yeah. the car you drive on the information superhighway <laughs> exactly no and and it's it's here in austin with time warner cable you know austin's a, a pretty That's big, a big city. town it should work uh almost a million people yeah and so it's not it's not a oh well, we have a slow bandwidth thing and plus i pl i pay double you know for the super Super fast internet, um, but anytime that um, they, they they seem to have some kind of flag for BitTorrent, and whenever it's running and actually files are being transferred over BitTorrent or uTorrent, I think I use, um, it will throttle uh, everything coming out of my pipe. Yeah. So not not only my computer, but my wife's computer, <clears throat> uh, the Netflix PS3, um, my brother in law's computer. Um, with so me, if, you, if with you have problems torrenting, <clears throat> here's what here's what I do, and this solves it completely. And you already said it is is download Peer Block is a uh, make sure you have Peer Block on and and uh, updated. Let it update every time you turn yep. it on. Yep. Get get a VPN. Uh, we we use Bola, and Bola works perfectly. It's quick. It's easy. And now they even have there's a link uh, on our site too. Right. And now there's a US routing, which I find is is really important because um one of the things I use when I'm torrenting is sometimes I look for music, and um so I'm trying to find out what music I want, and I want it for an American audience. Like I'm I'm trying to do it for yeah. DJing like and things if you like go that. when you're going through like a German server from the list. And you're using Google, you're going to get German results, right? Right. And I don't want German results. I don't want to know the uh, the popular songs in in Munich. Uh, I want to know popular songs. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. Uh, but but luckily, Bola now has that to where you know it, it says it's beta, but it's it's worked perfectly for me. Uh, the U.S. routing, and I I have those two things on at the same time, and then my computer works like normal. Like I don't even notice. I barely any uh, slowing down. Uh, all the computers in the house can work yeah. just fine, and I can torrent to my heart's content. Yep, worms. So yeah, go to our site, go over to the right, and click on the link to Bola VPN and sign up for it. And uh, and uh, it helps us if you do that. We don't get money for it; we get free VPN for uh, telling people to do that. So yeah. rock and roll. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And uh, you know, but basically, I want our stuff to be around. I'm convinced it's good, and enough thousand people, several thousand people, listen to it regularly, and enough hundreds of people have written to us and said, I, "I was a statist and I heard you, and now I'm convinced." And someone just said in the pod in the in the chat room, they listen to us constantly, and uh, and you know, someone just said, "Yeah, I started with Alex Jones, and then I found you, and now I listen to you guys constantly." And I say it's libertarian reindoctrination media, oh. and it's oh. fun. You well, know? you got to use his wording because it's really clever. Okay, he switched. He switched from fear to fiends. <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Yeah, yeah. So, BitTorrent is a perfect way to do that. I mean, even even if everyone just downloaded us without BitTorrent and had us on their hard drive, I mean, a lot of people have us, but they wouldn't have a way to turn it on instantly and share it with everybody in the world. And BitTorrent is the way to do that. It's a peer-to-peer -peer program. Now, here's an interesting thing about BitTorrent. I have heard copyright owner type people call BitTorrent a socialist or communist uh, program. Mm -hmm. It's completely the opposite. Yeah. It is a free market, or as you say, market program. It's an anarcho-capitalist product um, completely. because... BitTorrent works the opposite the way of a website server works. Now, if you go if you go to the freedomfeeds.com and we encourage people to do this all all day long, we would love the quality problem of so many hits on there that it shuts us down temporarily and we have to buy more server space. We used to have that problem because we were on a crappy um, internet company. We were on we were DreamHost was our server and they suck. Then we moved over to um, HostGator who rock and if you want to have a web server or run a podcast, I recommend going there and Go click on the affiliate link on our site for that too, for HostGator over on the right, because that helps us too. Um, but when you download stuff from, you know, like large files, like a media file from from a web server, from a website, uh, 
the more people that are downloading it at once, the more it slows down and taxes the server. Whereas mm -hmm. with BitTorrent, the more people who are downloading at once, it speeds it up for everybody. So it's like the free yeah. market. It's like the market where people are giving something for something else in a free exchange and everybody's happier. Whereas a it's socialist- It's a win-win situation, yeah. right? It's, it's not a zero-sum game. Right. It's an increase-your-wealth kind of a game. It's an and, infinite-sum and game. Infinites. There you go. There you go. And, and yeah, the reason why is because it's completely decentralized, spontaneous, uh, completely anarchist or market rather than, uh, controlled, centralized, planned. No, it's, it's, um, whatever is popular will have the most, uh, seeders because it'll have the most people who downloaded it. And then it'll be the fastest to download and it'll get more popular. Yep. So. You know, we have a couple plans for doing this. One is we're talking about it nonstop. We have ads for it. We have blog posts about how to do it. Go to the go to the Fiend site, freedomfiends.com, F-E-E-N-S.com. Click on the Torrent Club link and follow the directions there. And there's an incentive because you'll get episodes before everyone else. Like today's episode, this live show, we're going to put out in a couple hours on BitTorrent, but we're not going to put it out on the podcast till tomorrow. So the Torrenters will get it a day early. Uh, we do have an RSS feed and we tell you how to put it into your torrent program so it automatically downloads. And sometimes with the Anarchy Gumbo, you get stuff a week or two ahead. Like uh, the Mojo Nixon interview is up now on the torrents. It's not going to be out till, uh, you know, five days from now on the website. So there's that incentive. But also, literally, it is activism because every time you see the fiends, the state dies a little bit because every time you see <laughs> the fiends, more people have more availability to the fiends media and people discover it all the time for the first time. Some, you know, mm -hmm. kid in Germany, some kid, some guy in Cleveland, some lady in Canada, you know, someone, uh, this week we've had people touring from South America, Saudi Arabia, Germany, Japan, all over the world in places where like, they probably can't even access our website, like Iran, like that guy, you know, gets us via torrent and it really increases the like dr drone proofing of the fiends the more people that are seeding it and downloading each new episode when the government finally decides to turn off our switch the fiend switch either by you know shutting down our websites or a bullet to the brain or sticking us in a dark hole in some place where we can't talk to a lawyer or our families uh the fiends will still be out there and when that happens you'll hear about it if you're into other liberty media i mean people will talk about that and that's when you go 24 7 and you go mm -hmm. like you know i would if that happened to us and it was someone else i'd go rent seed boxes and seed it 24 7 and we rent a seed box and someone donates a seed box one's in germany one's in uh the netherlands and it's good to have them in different physical locations and a seed oh, yeah. box is a torrenting program and you know, archive of media that's set up somewhere that's on, it's not from a home DSL line. It's from like a T1 line at a server company. So it's really yeah. fast. And my experience with seeding is the more you initially seed something, the more it's going to be around years later when you've stopped seeding, the more seeds there will be. Uh, I had that mm -hmm. experience with submission and coffee in 2006, uh, my wife and I did this sex podcast and I also put up some of my books and a few other things and things by other people and not everything I did, did I seed from my home computer. And I was like the initial seeder 24 seven. And I had that kind of seeding the, uh, U verse. It was like a hundred bucks a month. I paid extra for it. It's like three times as fast as uh DSL and literally like a year of seeding that stuff. All that stuff is still available on BitTorrent, on Pirate Bay, on kat.ph, any of those sites, because we torrented it, because I torrented it initially for a year strongly. One person. Now, if t 10 people are doing it now, but if like 30 or 40 or 50 people do it, it would be so unstoppable. And that's what we're trying to encourage more people to do. That's why I torrent. That's why we yeah. torrent. And mm -hmm. I want to thank Shane Diwali because he's our torrent guy. Literally, like every time we put out an, up an episode, He's subscribed by email on our site. You can do that as well as RSS feed. And he gets an email. He downloads this, the thing and he puts it up uh, on Torrent on both our seed boxes. He tweets it. Uh, he puts it on cat.php, cat in the Philippines. It's kickasstorrents.php. And then all the other Torrent sites pick it up from there. 
And we're getting so many listeners who would never, ever stumble across our website because of that. So yeah. every time you seed the fiends, the state dies a little. <laughs> That's why I do it. I mean, I don't look at this as disposable media. It's not the newspaper of the day. It's the great American novel of the day. It's the great stateless novel of the day. And I want it to be around <laughs> in a thousand years and y'all can help. Amen. Amen. Let's well said. Look. Yep. Can you play a song? Can we take a tiny break and play a little bit of a song? Uh, I'm not routed through the mixer, no. Um, okay. Do you want to take a break? Do you want to talk? Uh, yeah, go ahead and stop the recording. Um, we'll take a little break. Hi, I'm Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends, and like you, I'm concerned with privacy on the internet. The electronic police state is strangling our previous protections, and the central scrutinizer is trying to squint into all areas of our lives. That's why smart people surf the net with a VPN or virtual private network. I use a VPN from Bola VPN. Bola VPN has your utmost security in mind and will allow you to surf, email, and do other computing tasks without leaving a trail of breadcrumbs across the internet. Unlike many other VPN providers, Bola VPN doesn't log traffic. With Bola VPN, you can change your apparent location or disappear completely. Bola VPN has been around since 2007, which is OG in the VPN world. Bola VPN is easy to install and configure. Best of all, it can be had for less than 25 cents a day, which is a small price to pay for this much security. And if you open a support ticket saying you heard about them through the Freedom Teams, they'll add three extra days free. That's Bola VPN at B O L E H V P N dot net. A science fiction comic adventure from Big Head Press. Quantum Vibe. It's year 2523. There are colonies on Venus, Mars, and Mercury. People travel in bubbles, fly at hyper speed. With brain implants and artificial gravity. A scientific genius and his clever assistant set out on an adventure through the solar system on a secret mission to find the key to access new frontiers and save liberty. Quantum vibe. There's a robot girl and zany creatures made with genetically engineered features. And corporate villains crave the opportunity to steal a profit from mother's ingenuity. A scientific genius and his clever assistant set out on an adventure through the solar system on a secret mission to find the key to access new frontiers and save liberty. Quantum vibe. Want to contribute to Liberty but short on cash? You can help the Freedom Fiends without even spending a post-1964 dime. Download uTorrent and start seeding Fiends episodes and DVDs to help keep us drone-proof. There's a Torrent Club link at the top of FreedomFiends.com. There you'll find our Torrent RSS feed and instructions to grab past episodes and automatically download new ones, even while you're away from the computer. You'll also get special episodes of The Fiends and Anarchy Gumbo days or even weeks before regular podcast subscribers who aren't torrenting. Leave your computer on, seeding the torrents while you're at work or asleep. The more people seeding The Fiends, the more drone-proof we'll be when the boot comes down. Okay, go ahead. Well, I was just... Uh, well, I was going to take a break. That was the whole point. <laughs> I right. was saying that stuff because I didn't think it needed to be recorded. Uh, okay. But um, did you listen to the the Ben Stone interview with, uh, I think his name was Randall Perry? No. But he no? is uh, a guy that's helping write a Fiends cast right now on uh, doing encrypted email. It's not up yet. but Ah, yeah. Yeah, he seems to be the guy for post. it. I, I, I listened to that interview with him on uh, on the Bad Quaker, and it was really amazing. Uh, he does stuff like that, but um, he seems to be like a problem solver. Like, that's his thing. And uh, one of his hobbies, businesses right now, or I don't know if it's a business business, but it seems like something he's recently started is uh, is hidden solutions that are really cool for, for hiding things and having them accessible. Like, like I said, gun racks that come out that pop pop out of the back of your couch or in a hidden wall and you just press a button, um, things like that. And it, it's, it's really cool to hear him talk about all his ideas and his stuff. So I would just wanted to plug that while you were out uh, going cool. pee-pee kitty. Now you go pee-pee kitty and I'm going to talk. I'm not right. going to record. I'm not that interesting without you. <laughs> I'll be right back. How long you? Okay. So all right. We're recording. About we're that. recording. We're recording. Yeah. Um, so yeah, for, basically for those the reason who missed it live, I, I did want to <laughs> give one more little pitch. Uh, so it's on the archive. Uh, go listen to uh, I think it's Randall Perry 
on on the Bad Quaker. Um, didn't really know who he was when I when I saw it on the show notes of the Bad Quaker website, uh, but listen to it and I do highly recommend it. It's a really interesting podcast and the guy does some cool things talks about security and different ways to hide things and uh and spirit them away i guess and keep them safe from the bad guys um like i said during the break you know gun racks that pop out of nowhere at the press of a button and and here was a cool thing too um setting up a tiny microphone and you can have a, a secret knock like you know or i wouldn't yeah, do but something don't that just- obvious don't use Shave that one at all. Shave a haircut, uh, two bits. But, but that, that, you get the idea. Uh, uh, secret knock, the microphone, and, and then it's – I forget what he calls it. But um, some kind of program that can actually recognize the pattern uh, and then will unlock it for you because that, that's, that's huh. kind of a cool thing too, right? Uh, and it could be a secret wall like a Batman kind of thing. Or a book yeah, piece. although if, if you do any of that with any way for anybody to track it but via purchases – when they come raid your house, they will rip your house to pieces with pitchforks and jackhammers. Because they know, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, and they have dogs of, that can smell. Too- they have dogs that can smell guns as well as drugs, but guns literally. Yeah. Like if there's a gun right. behind the wall, they can smell it. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Although we know how well sniffing dogs work, percentage wise. Yeah. But so uh, I guess pay for things in bitcoins if you're paying them online, and pay for things in cash if you're buying them in person. And Bitcoin stuff, you'd have to really uh, work at having it anonymous, even doing it online. Like, you know, if you ever use a non, I mean, we've blown it with the addresses that we use. We'd have to set up new ones to be anonymous because, uh, you know, I've, I, I created and checked it and downloaded it without using a VPN. We didn't have one yet then. And mm-hmm. I've checked our Bitcoin level online. You know, there's a place to do that. And yeah. I have posted it on our site and talked about BitTorrent a lot. You know, if you want to be anonymous, you do things quietly. Own guns quietly. You know, if you're that okay, you wanted a tip from Claire Wolf's book. Don't do the illegal thing that you are advocating shouldn't be illegal publicly. Don't be and we've said that before in a different way. <laughs> yeah. You know, don't be you can't be an agorist and an activist. You can't be someone who works in the underground economy and doesn't pay taxes by uh, you know, as what you do and be the guy having the radio show saying, don't pay taxes, you know, yeah, uh, you yeah. will get busted eventually. So, I mean, basically what she said, the example she used actually describes me. I don't know if she was describing me, but she knows our whole deal and she loves our guns and weed movie. She said, you know, don't be a pro marijuana activist and deal weed on the side. I don't even smoke yeah. weed on the side. Yeah. I don't smoke totally. weed, but you know, there need to be more people like me who don't do any drugs or ever have drugs in their house who are adamantly and publicly pro get rid of the drug war. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Uh, I suppose that is a, a really good piece of advice. Uh, I mean, I guess they do deal with Stacy Litz, and that was a very bad uh, example of what to be on on tons of different levels. But yeah, that's one of them. Is she's completely pro uh, pro non aggression, anti drug war, and uh, apparently was uh, was dealing drugs and and then snitched when she got caught. Um, yep. So don't be Litz. Don't Litz it up. Litz uh, it up. Yeah. Litz it up. That's my lit's function. Don't be a lit's. Don't be a lit's. Yeah, somebody was saying yesterday they really want to make lit's into a verb, and I think that's good. Man, he yeah. got lit's. Yeah, yeah. The lit's mob. Avoid the lit's mob. Yeah. The lit's mob. I like that. Yeah, yeah. So, it's the fiends, and uh, it's the fiends. welcome. We're live and recording uh, all on our own without the curry and without the lrn so yeah i feel um, i'm not my my stomach doesn't hurt from the curry like it did on the curry show <laughs> which basically we were on adam curry's network doing our live show with a chat before and i would end up just like tensed up and like you know i couldn't poo for a day afterwards i was so like eh. i mean that's kind of exaggeration but i literally would end up with like a backache from doing that show because it was so stressful mm-hmm. trying to get his web gnomes to press the button to put us on live. We we're supposed to go on at a certain time. An hour later, we'd finally go live. And it was just yeah, insanely yeah. frustrating. And I'm not bashing him publicly. I guess I'm bashing his web gnomes or maybe him for choosing them and letting them run his thing. But uh, I guess they were beta testing something new. But 
and they're programmers. If they couldn't, computer programmers, uh, which may be part of the problem because they wrote their whole system to do it where we're using off-the-shelf software and it's working. And <laughs> Ian Freeman uses off-the-shelf software. He's not a computer programmer and it works. And, you know, the, the Curry network, it's like, I didn't want to be the beta test for it. You know, I mean, I think at this point we're good enough and we're doing great radio and people tell us that all the time to where, why do we need to be on someone else's? You know, we had a few more listeners on there, but their listeners didn't like us anyway, man. They'd argue with uh, us. In the some, some of them did. Uh, we seem to have won Manimal over. He was like, where's the fiends? I want the fiends <laughs> uh, during the last show, <clears throat> which uh, at first he was all like, you guys need to eat a penis or some kind of other yeah. trolley type comments. He said, I'm going to be on here trolling you 24 seven. But yeah, yeah, we yeah, did win yeah. Manimal over. I don't <laughs> know if he, he over. can still find us. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not going yeah, to go, go find him, but he can find us. <laughs> I but, but, yeah, there, there'd be gun grabby people in the chat room. And there was one lady that was, I don't know if she was a left anar anarcho leftist or, but she seemed to be kind of commie about things. And she was all like property is theft and, and we need to force people to buy the things I want want them to buy which is nothing uh so so yeah i mean well it, 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 in one regard it's almost like that was mission work like going to the curry network and <laughs> and preaching the gospel of the fiends um so i kind of thought that was a good thing but um i don't know man it, it, it's my, mainly the technical differences as you put it as you coined it that uh that makes me think uh glad not to not to have to worry about that kind of stuff anymore yeah yeah. I'm stealing time from the fiends to uh, I'm talking with Link Porterfield and uh, Randall Perry, the guys who are writing that. Uh, that's your guy, right? Randall Perry. Uh, 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 is that is that the guy that was interviewed on Ben Quaker? Let me see. You don't remember? You, you were, you well, you, you sent were, yeah. me you, you sent me a thing of an old guy named Dr. Kurt Lehovec. OK, no, him. but isn't Randall Perry the guy you were just talking about a minute yes. ago? Yes, yeah. He OK, is. He just, I, was, you know, I was talking I about just, what you sent me on. Uh, on yeah. The, Pigeons. Okay. I just, I wanted, well, this is segueing into something after I tell these people by email, go listen to our show. Uh, I want to do an obituary for a friend of mine who died. Okay. And I, his name's Kurt Lahovic, and I just posted a link to it. Uh, Kurt Lahovic co invented the integrated circuit. Oh, wow. Yeah. And uh, he is a dude. Hang on. Hang on. We, on now on now on now all right did you so, get stuck in an infinite loop there did you yeah i think so I, break? yeah now, so kurt lahovic kurt lahovic died this year at the age 93. Ooh. i met this cat in la at an open mic poetry thing where i went to play guitar back before you know I figured out what to do with my life. You know, after my popular band broke up and I moved to LA and nobody knew me and I was like, oh, I guess you start in the coffee shop. So I went to this open mic and played and kicked ass and nobody liked it because it wasn't funny and it was dark and it was, uh, you know, it wasn't what you play at open mics to please people. Kurt mm -hmm. Lehovic was, uh, you know, he's he died at 93 this year. I just found out he died, but he, so he was probably 80 something. This was about 10, 12 years ago. And he was reading from his self-published book of love poems. I thought it was so Aww. sweet. It was this old man with like holes in his shoes, you know, Czech, Czechoslovakian accent. He's from Czech Republic. And uh, I, I went to his house and I hung out with him and he was really interesting. I liked him. And he was, he was on a, on a, first of all, he co-invented the integrated circuit, the thing that runs everything in the world now, everything great and everything mm -hmm. horrible. And he was paid $1 to do it, which I don't think is a bad thing because he was under contract from Honeywell Company Corporation in the 50s. And he was making a good bit, you know, making good money there. And he had benefits, retirement benefits from them. But uh, it was one of those things of like, you know, you get it. If you make something we can patent, we pay you a dollar so we can say we own the patent. Mm. So he invented the, I think it was the PNP layer. He solved some problem that enabled or created integrated circuits p dash n junction isolation yeah according to wiki i'm not smart like that but right <laughs> that's what wiki says <laughs> but i met him and he was reading these really sweet kind of almost childlike but pretty good like love poetry at mm -hmm. this thing and 
uh, I talked to him afterwards and, you know, as he explained to me, he'd invented the integrated circuit. And I, at first I thought he was trying to scam me. And then I talked to him a little more and understood that he knew what he was talking about. I knew and I knew enough to know he wasn't lying. And then I looked him up and found a picture of him on the internet. I'm like, oh, that is him. Uh, the guy had holes in his shoes. Like the guy who invented the integrated circuit and revolutionized the world had holes in his shoes because he couldn't afford better shoes. Then I hung out with him a few more times, took him out to dinner. He took me out to dinner once, you know, bought me dinner, steak mm-hmm. restaurant at a sizzler. And I went over to his house and he owned his house. He lived in half of it. And half the other half of it was really nice and like fixed up and painted and plastered and had everything, you know, running water, internet, whatever. And he had homeless people living there. He was letting them hmm. live there. And then he lived in the other side of the house in a hovel. I mean, literally like in piles of newspapers everywhere. It was dirty. Um, it was really strange to me. And it was very um it was very giving of him. Now I've read interviews with him since where he kind of sounded commie. Like I think anybody who makes over a hundred thousand dollars a year should be forced to, he didn't say like tax, but he said like forced to use mm. it to create service. Basically, I guess a little, a little less like central planning, but you get to be charitable with it, you know, which is kind of mm. weird. Um, but he was a really nice guy and a really cool cat. And there's a, a picture of him I took that's all over the internet that is like the picture of him, which is kind of cool. Like there weren't a lot of pictures of the guy, you know, older, but the picture of him that most people repost is a picture I took in my living room, which is kind of cool. cool. It's and, the one on this, uh, <clears throat> Kurt, uh, Havel or Kurt Lehovic, uh, Havel. Havel was the president <laughs> of the Czech, Re- Czech Republic. Ah, this guy was okay. from Czechoslovakia. He left, you know, Before it fearing the, the Nazi Republic. threat. He wasn't, he wasn't Jewish as far as I know, but you know, everybody who had, a an ability that was useful elsewhere that could get out did that was smart, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So he came to America and be, you know, like Dr. Strangelove, one of those like scientists plucked from Germany by America, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but he wasn't wow. like Dr. Strangelove. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Where's the picture? Let me post the picture. Post uh, it in the chat room. So I know what yeah, picture you're talking yeah, about. Cause okay. you sent to here is to the me. picture and I'll post this in the, uh, it's actually a screenshot from a uh, mini DV camera. I wanted to make a documentary about the guy and oh, I was talking to him cool. about doing it, but uh, <clears throat> he actually was like, well, I've been screwed before and you're going to have to pay me all this money. And I'm like, okay, well, no, nah. <laughs> <laughs> not that I wouldn't want to cut him in on it, but just like he started making yeah. demands. He was, he'd been screwed. I guess he felt screwed by that thing, you know? So, yeah, by yeah. by getting by paid invent, a dollar inventing to inventing computers and by, getting paid a dollar. <laughs> yeah. Now a really interesting thing is the there's a a fan site made up of him. It's kurtlahovic.info, I think. Uh huh. It's in this list here. Um, uh, it yeah. has an yep. it has a a an Alexa ranking of no rank. So like the guy who invented the inter- <laughs> the the thing that invented the world of the internet and the computers and drones and podcasts, um, his website has no views. That's kind of sad. So I just wanted to take a minute and bump up his Alexa ranking a little bit by putting him in, linking him in the talking about him and, you know, like, Hey, he's my friend and he died. And I just found out like, you know, he died like January, mm-hmm. February this year. So Kurt Lehovic, I tip my pod hat to you. Should we read one of his poems? Maybe. As oh, a- do, do. Did you find one? They're awesome. They're uh, quaint. They're, they're, they're on the Kurt Lehovic, uh, dot info. There's a uh, okay. links to his Re- read six one. books of poetry. Read one. They're awesome. Let's see. Uh, okay, so I'm going to... Uh, hopefully it actually gives you the poems here instead of... Oh, yeah, here you go. Okay, so... Do you want me to read from Facets of Love, Poems About Poets and Poetry, A Modern Genesis, Nature Poems, Soul, God, and Buddha? Read a short loneliness. one from each of the first two. Read a love poem and then one about poets, if there's a short one of each. And if not, we got time. We got, we got bites on the internet. Okay, okay. Use all uh, the bites. Facets of love. Sample poems. <laughs> pull a um, reverb up? <laughs> how, yeah. Well, I, I don't have my... my okay, read it, record. man. Read it. Right. Ecstasy and tragedy. My ecstasy and tragedy, which I have never told. My heart remained young while my body grew old. I closed my eyes and remember young girls dancing away. My aching heart in November longs for its lost loves of May. Oh, isn't that cute? All right. Um... That was from his love poems, and then we'll do one from 
poems about poets and poetry, which is a very poetic name, I think. All right. We're, we're beginning to sound like NPR. Yeah. Right. I like this. I mean, everybody else who's doing Liberty Cast today is probably like screaming about how the government is trying to put someone in jail for protesting drones. And we're talking about the love poetry of the man who invented the internet without, you know, who really invented the internet. And got yeah. paid a dollar and died with holes in his <laughs> shoes. <laughs> well, here's speaking of the internet. Here's um, a poem from his uh, poet poetry book about poets and poems. It's called an Inter- internet tidbit. Lonely poet looks for letters which express your heart's desire for an everlasting friendship which we will not let expire, and your letter will be answered with the poem from my heart as a seed for something deeper, as a seed for love's start. If you respond with the poem, which is humorous and teases, I will answer with the poem, hoping it also pleases. You may answer, and so on, and so we shall proceed, to poets exchanging tidbits, and who knows where this will lead. Aw, nice. it sounds like it's about chatting, you know, or, yeah. or exchanging any info over <laughs> the want, internet. I wonder if you got on the internet and said, are there any sexy girls out there? I invented <laughs> the internet. Chicks? I invented the internet. <laughs> Really? I did. I mean, he did way more than Al Gore did, you know? Yeah, yeah. Al Gore just directed different people to steal different money and told them what to do with it. Even if he did that, I don't even know, man. Or he's just a liar, probably more likely the case. Did you click on that picture of him? Yeah, yeah. I I I took that in my... I did did a little video interview with him. I don't have the video interview anymore, but it was done... uh, That was in my crappy studio apartment I lived in before, uh, before I met DJ. Yeah. I can see the broken mirror there. Me out of obscurity. Yeah. I didn't Bad break luck. it. It came like that. Yeah. Well, I lived it there came for about, like that. I lived I went there to the for broken s- mirror store. So, <laughs> No, the apartment came like that. We, we accept the, the bad bro- luck for you. The and, broken and, and, and mirror you Pass on the I discount to you. I love yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I did live in that apartment for seven years, and um, I wasn't unhappy, and I did a lot of stuff. I wrote all my books and started making a filmmaker, being a filmmaker and making my living in that mm-hmm. crappy Silver Lake Los Angeles apartment at 1149 North Coronado Street in the uh, upstairs back left apartment, if anyone wants to turn that into a mecca. <laughs> or look it up on Google the Earth. Michael it actually Kamba. looks. If you look at 1149 North Coronado on Google Earth and look at the house, it looks really nice now. Like the the landlord has done up the whole neighborhood. But don't fool yourself. Like that's a neighborhood where MS13 tags your house, and then the landlord comes by and scrapes it off and paints over it the next day. So <laughs> they're just trying to create jobs, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Who MS13 or yeah, or yeah. The land- <laughs> the, the graffitied wall fallacy. Right? <laughs> All right, so let's uh, talk about. Break? No, what? No, eighteen minutes. Got to talk about the. Yeah, uh, long time. All right, gotta talk, talk about, about something. Gotta talk about something. Okay, homeless man grateful for boots, but barefoot again. Uh, uh, yeah. The guy the cop <laughs> stole all the money to. He hid his boots because they're so valuable. He's afraid he'll get killed for them, which is. Really, is that what does that say about the New York City police's ability to do anything <laughs> to protect anyone? What? At least he says he hid them. I mean, who really knows what he did with them? He could have sold lost them for them. crack. Yeah, yeah, sold them for a meal if he's sold them for a meal and you know yeah. bought some cheap boots that'll still keep him warm. Also, check out how entitled he is. Like. I want money uh, for being on YouTube. Yeah, I was put on YouTube. He says, I was put on everything without permission. What do I get? This went around the world, and I want a piece of the pie. Uh, buddy, the only pie to be had was uh, the New Boots. York Police Department giving themselves bat- pats on the back. I and mean, he's probably pat on he's, the back, he's, for you. But he's probably doing better as a panhandler, pan- panhandler now. There's probably people coming up to him all day long with their Thank iPads you. going, look, you're on YouTube, and then let me buy you lunch. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. People really? that that stuff goes in waves. I yeah. figured they'd be like, man, he already got some boots. You don't need <laughs> a dollar. You need a dollar. Sell in those a, boots, you get a hundred beers. Buddy. In a true free begging market, you know, <laughs> beggars in America. I mean, I, I feel bad for anyone that's on the street, especially when it's cold, like in New York, and probably they're there because of the government. I mean, tell how that would work. Explain the non aggression But let me say really quickly: in India, people get limbs sawed off to be more pathetic to beg. I mean, that's really mm. if you're gonna beg. Man, go all the way. So tell why most people who are homeless, it's because of the government. There's a good non-aggression principle thing, and then we'll take a break. That's more of an economics thing, I think. Go ahead, Don't man. you? 
Okay. Well, because the government aggresses to try, try to control the economy. They put a, gu- a gun there to the go. head. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. That, so that's the, a lot that's of the people are homeless because they've been arrested for weed or some drug, which is not, you know, taking a drug or selling a drug is not a violent thing. The government does something violent, throws you in jail, takes all your money, takes your house, and then you're unemployable. So you end up homeless. That's mm-hmm. one of the many ways the government makes people homeless. Yep. Uh, another huge way is war, right? Um, a lot of homeless people are are vets of different wars. The Vietnam War is a big one because there was a draft. Um, so, and that is people 100% who weren't aggression. ready to be soldiers were made to be soldiers. You know, even if you want to look at it from not a non-aggression principle of the Viet- the Vietnam War was an act of aggression by the United States and was paid for by aggression by stealing tax money. Okay, and all the of that draft itself is aggression. I mean, it's even, literally yeah. but no, but no, stop. Lim, let's stop it at you know that war was aggression. But even if you want to take it from a minarchist standpoint of well, small government is good, which I like to put on that hat once in a while because most of our new listeners probably are that at best and statist at worst, or you know not worst, just on the continuum. So even if you believe that some war is ethical or having a defensive military is ethical. Having a draft is not, and even from a purely economic standpoint of, you know, what's worth doing, a draft is not worth doing because you end up with soldiers who don't want to be soldiers and they are not effective. They get in the way more than they help. They throw grenades on their officers. That happened a lot in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. They, they are counterproductive to having a military and, uh, they end up with really bad mental problems that society more worse than people who want to go in and be soldiers uh, yeah. that and society is stuck with the burden of taking care of them yep. yep, and dealing with them and having them panhandling in front of Macy's and uh, you know, having to be a puppy parade when a cop gives them a boot paid for with money that's stolen. Now, why is the cop salary stolen money? And why is there a gun involved that we don't see? Yes. So, um, Nobody writes a check to their local police department and sends it every two weeks or every month as part of payment for service. Uh, the police department is funded completely 100% uh, on stolen money, which uh, I, I would say taxes are stolen money. Um, the reason I say it's stolen is because it's taken without any kind of voluntary transaction. It is a non-market transaction. There's not, there, there's no market involved whatsoever. The taxes are taken out of, literally out of your paycheck without you uh, acquiescing to it uh, and if they aren't directly taken out of your paycheck through withholding then uh, you are asked to pay them at the end of the year you must file your taxes if you don't eventually the IRS will catch up to you uh, if you do file and don't pay uh, eventually the IRS will send you letters and then send men and so every every dollar that that gets uh, sent to that cop in his paycheck uh, has been gotten through that means, through a means that, that was involuntary. It was forcibly taken from people. Um, so his whole check, uh, every money that he spends, everything he buys is spent with stolen money. Uh, conversely, the homeless man, every dollar he got, he most likely got voluntarily. I mean, yeah, I guess maybe he stole something and sold it. That's a possibility. But uh, every dollar given Probably to him. Probably not. Uh, yeah. Well, you don't. You never know. But but the point I'm making is, if you panhandle, right, and that's your main source of income, is panhandling, is asking people, hey, you got some spare change, dollar, alms for the poor, whatever. That's all voluntary. I I, I can look at you and say, no, man, I'm not giving you money. Or I could look at you and say, oh, what's well, a nice sunny day? I'm in a good mood. I just got late. Here's here's three bucks. <clears throat> go go get yourself, uh, you know, a McDouble and a fry and a small and, drink, and a crack whatever. rock and a small crack and a rock. Crack rock. You know, I actually that, wrote... that's voluntary. So he's the the homeless person actually is doing honest work he's got an honest job because he's honestly saying i'm broke i have no money please give me money the cop is a is a very dishonest kind of a job because he's saying i'm doing all this work for you i must take your money and and look how great i <laughs> and am and most of that. his work is aggression anyway is is right. effing right. with people for not doing right. anything violent you you get money stolen from you to pay for somebody whose job it is to steal more money from you now, I want to segue into one thing, and then we're going to take a break, and I'm going to try to play some music from my iPod. If we want to really streamline this, I can do that when we take breaks. Uh, I have okay. it hooked up and ready to go. I'm going to play my band, The Beef People, my punk rock band from 1984, okay. where I played guitar. Cool. Um, but I want to say really quick, wh- more on why I have a problem with agorists and libertarians and anarchists who beg for a living. And I don't mind if somebody has a, an emergency dying family member or in jail or whatever and asks for money once but when people make a career out of it um it basically i think gives it's annoying as hell 
And it gives a really bad name to the idea of trying to create a counter economy. If you're doing it by begging from people who are in the regular economy and it begging in itself does not violate the non-aggression principle, but it's hell of annoying when people say F the system, I'm not going to work for the man. I'm independent. And then constantly harangue their friends for money and places to stay and things like that. Begging for a living and being an agorist is kind of like being a recovering alcoholic and being a total asshole. A total asshole recovering alcoholic is still sober, but it doesn't make other people want to be. And an mm. agorist who begs all the time isn't violating the non-aggression principle, but he's not making anybody else want to be an agorist. Mm. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. let's play some music. Oh, you got a comment? I, I, have, I have a little follow-up there. Go um, ahead, man. Go ahead. I don't want to be too callous because I do understand and am understanding more and more that it, it can be hard to make an honest living out there. I like to use that term honest living because that's what I'm trying to make for myself. Uh, I explained in the last cast how I can't even, I can't even buy a, a taxi cab and have my own little taxi cab company and expand it. I can't do that. The government won't let me. There's a monopoly. Or, yeah, or but a you're delivering like. pizza, which is working in the system and you know, you're taxed and the food you're delivering is taxed and the system is regulated. Even my tips are taxed. taxed. Even my, yeah. my tips are automatically but, taxed unless they're cash. But that's completely ethical to me compared to, or that's completely preferable behavior, universally preferable mm -hmm. behavior to me than saying, okay, I'm going to drop out of the system and just beg on the internet and couch surf. <laughs> and in that, let's play some yeah. punk rock from 1984. All right. All right. All right. Nice. That was uh, going all the way back to, and going all the way back to 1984 there with the beef people kicked out. Yeah. Um, that's when I was born. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So is that a picture of you? Is that a picture of a young skinny you? That's a young Nima. Yeah. Damn. I thought that was Frank, man. No. How long ago was that? I'm shorter, but my shoulders are broader. Um, okay. If you want to know how I did that, um, I right clicked on it and did view image and then copied that link instead of the page link. Now, let me ask if there's anybody on here who's not Nima's friend on Facebook or do you have your stuff friends only or not? I don't know, man. Don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember. So let me check something out here. Um, let me try. Is there anybody on here who's not on Facebook or not friends with me on Facebook? Let me ask that. And then I will do that trick with a picture of mine that's on Facebook and uh, see if you can see it. So let's see if that works. So I basically opened up the picture and then right clicked on it. <clears throat> and then uh, 
and then posted that link. You know, All right, let me try that. Let's see. Yeah. So right click view image. Oh, uh, I don't have that. I have save image as copy image URL. I guess copy image URL would work. Huh? Yeah. 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 Man, all my pictures are pictures of me that, or pictures people have tagged. Let me, I can't find a picture that's. Uh, oh, okay. Me. Yeah, that worked. Copy image URL works uh, from Google Chrome. Yeah. So that yeah. that's what you do if you want to pick copy image URL. Man, all my pictures are other people's pictures. I need to find one that's me. <clears throat> so, uh, so yeah, so, yeah. What, what are we talking about? What's going on? Barbies. Here? I think Barbies. we're going to talk That's about Barbies. About. No, I think we should talk about, um, let's see. Well, there's push to step up domestic use of drones. I don't really want to talk about that. That's not going to be relevant in, in 100 don't years. don't want to talk about drones? Because we'll be being broadcast from drones in 100 years. <laughs> Private drones. Satel- like Instead of satellite radio, you'll have drone radio. There, let's talk about that. That could work, man. You know, really, I mean, that could work yeah. if someone took the how to make a $250 radio station idea off the Freedom Fiend, search that, make your own Liberty radio station for $250, uh, and put that in a quadricopter, you know, you could fly wherever you want and broadcast and probably evade for a while at least. You know, you wouldn't want any fingerprints on it. You wouldn't want any, I'm not saying people should do illegal things. I'm just saying, you know, everything's stacked against everyone right now to where you have to kind of think like a criminal even if you're not. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know, man. Eventually they'll, they'll, radio. they'll have drone to drone missiles though. See that that's the problem with having a government, man. That's it. They they will always have more power than the average person, uh, due to the nature of them. Um you know, people like to say, Hey, well, people are evil. That's why we can't have a government. And Scott was making fun of that the other Scott Horton was making fun of that the other day and he goes, Yeah, so why would you give them a government? <laughs> if people are evil, why would you give them a government? And I've made that argument before, but I think that was pretty succinct. Is uh you think people are evil. Yeah, some people are, you know. Um apparently we we used to always say is like two percent of people are, are sociopaths. Um apparently it's gotten bigger though. Like in the past twenty, thirty years, uh it's like doubled. Uh, supposedly it's four percent now, according to people who study those kinds of things. Um so yeah, and those people have cover. They have they have a place to hide uh, in the government and in in giant institutions, um, and they can use the massive power of those things more power than the average person could ever have. Nobody, n- not even a private a big private company, can afford to waste the kind of money it takes to waste in order to build a predator drone or a Hellfire missile or an F thirty five or an F twenty two or an aircraft carrier. <laughs> Someone it's said domestic. Tr- someone said domestic drones. Is that like domestic violence? Yes, but on a massive scale. And <laughs> domestic violence is generally privately funded. Uh, domestic drones are, <laughs> are, you know, domestic violence and domestic <laughs> drones commit aggression, but only the drones are funded with aggression. Domestic violence is generally. Yeah. Oh, that's a bad joke. That's like well, when well, Tracy Morgan goes into the the women's shelter to show his movie as community. You know, to like because now he's an Oscar winner, and he says. Quiet, ladies of the battered women's shelter. A man is speaking. I was watching that last <laughs> night, and my wife goes, "That's not funny." And I was like, "Kind of is, but it's it really funny. does push <laughs> the limit." You know, I think it's pretty funny. And she is really one of the most unpolitically correct females I've ever met. And she is like, "That that's not funny." Which if is Tracy Morgan line. says that it's funny. <laughs> he says it can be funny. It's the more offensive. Uh, if if he says it, the more funny. Nice. Uh, Nice. But okay, so so yeah, domestic violence, right? Like the guy who shot his dad with a bow and arrow the other day. That was domestic violence. Uh, imagine if this psychopath who did that, who killed his own dad with a bow and arrow, or tried to with a bow and arrow, and when that failed, stabbed him to death. Um, imagine, and it's not hard to imagine. Imagine he worked his way up from a beat officer who imagine regularly beat people all to the police chief um, to some kind of politician. All the people. What, j- just imagine if, if instead of a bow and arrow, he had a, a, dro- a predator drone at his disposal. Something massive like that. Imagine he had an aircraft carrier, nuclear weapon. Yeah. Uh, those are the Doomsday kind of weapons. device a la Dr. Strangelove. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, those those kind of devices don't exist or can't don't really get created in the absence of a government. I, I don't see how they can because they're so unbelievably cost ineffective and ridiculous. 
uh, who's going to spend billions of dollars on something that they plan on never using? You know, yeah. it's just it's not it's not a market transaction, and I don't think you'd have that kind of action or good in in a real market. Okay, so nice. Okay, Mark in Canada says he can see the cat photo. I just did the right click copy link location uh, trick for a picture on Facebook that I have marked as friends only. But if you just get the image, so if people want to, if they're on Facebook and they want to share a picture on here, and if it doesn't get out of hand to where like we can't even, you know, chat on here, I guess I'm putting limits on our anarchy here, but it's our property. So I can, it's our property. Um, you know, you can post pictures that way. What I usually do is upload them to the fiends with FTP and then copy the link location. But uh, yes, so you can either start your own website. Uh, yeah, <laughs> which or you know you can do it like like we said earlier. I kind of would like to encourage uh, people to use the fiends chat when we're not here. You know, basically the only rule is don't get us drone. No talking about you know violence or well, I guess other people's violence. We talk about that all all day long, but no talk about like. Anything that's going to get a knock at my door or get us knocked offline. So, uh, and you will be banned promptly. And if I need to, I'll add more admins if that starts happening. So we can have uh, people 24 7 moderating if it gets popular. But get off Facebook and get on the Fiends chat, man. It's free, it's fun. You can do most things you can do on Facebook except get hassled by strangers because we control it. <laughs> There you go. Preach there to the go. choir, brother. Preach to the choir. Well, I guess you could do this with just more than Facebook, right? Any image on the internet, you just right click and uh, copy URL is what Google has it, and I guess yours says view. Uh, yeah. View image. Yeah. What do you use? And Firefox. Then, well, well, actually, I can do copy image location, but I did view image and then copy location. But yeah, uh, I mean, there's some people, some webmasters and companies that set things up so you can't embed or do that with photos. You know, they want a closed system. They don't understand how the internet works. But with most sites, you can do what we just did. Just right click on the picture. Uh, I don't know what you do in, you, you, that would even work in Linux. I don't know what you do in Mac. I think you, uh, you know, Macs are so superior, everyone says, but I think you like control F R six D slash <laughs> middle click. I don't know. No, I, th I think I think it would be the same way. You would do your right click, which I think is. Is Apple there? There used to not click. be a. There used to be just one button on. There still is, but there's a keyboard button you can press. Yeah. to Do the same. So you have to right click, and man, I think it's either Command or Apple or something like that. I really, I really hate when people tell me. But here. I really hate whenever I do something, talk, ask a question on the internet about Windows, about how do you do this in Windows, and idiots go get a Mac. I'm like, fuck you. Okay, if yeah. someone tells me to get Linux, they're not helping me at that moment with my problem I'm having, you know, and I'm usually under a deadline trying to produce some media and it's like, I don't care what operating system I'm on. I'm not fucking Richard Stallman, but don't tell me to get a Mac because you're telling me to get something that costs more, is more clunky, doesn't work as well, is made for consuming media rather than creating media. And you're just jumping on a bandwagon because you think you're one of the cool kids. Mac is not better than PC. Uh, they're both run by giant oppressive corporations that take money from the government and use the monopoly of the government. And uh, But well, PC shit works for me. And Mac shit, like you can't even use, you can't even do stuff on an iPad, iPad that you can do anywhere on the you can't use the internet right on it and richard stallman <laughs> said it right richard stallman said i'm glad steve jobs is dead steve or i was happy when i heard steve jobs died because steve jobs made the internet hey he made jail cool that was the quote mm. and i didn't say when i said that quote before that he i forgot to say that he said i i was happy when i heard steve jobs died which really pissed a lot of people off mm, mm, mm -hmm. i don't care anybody well, can be glad anybody's dead uh, there are Man, some there are socialist some, curmudgeon there are some benefits uh to producing i don't know if they're benefits but but final cut pro there are some things on mac some mac programs that work well uh i i did really enjoy final cut uh premiere is almost just as good maybe i just like final cut because i'm more used to it um but the thing is those were my work computers. Like, I don't think I'd ever personally buy a Mac because I can't afford to shell out a ton of money whenever it gets old to buy a new Mac. Weren't you or using whenever. what was uh, that giant internet company running their Ubuntu on? Macs or PCs? What hardware? PCs. Of course they were because they are a company they're, that they're, works they're with the bottom line. And yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
you know, I guess if you can afford to blow a bunch of money on a Mac and then uh, be limited, very much more limited in the software you can use um, and, and how you acquire that software, which to me is the big thing, uh, then yeah, I guess Mac can be a preference. But um, but I'm kind of with you. You know, I, I do things on a tight budget, and I feel like with a PC. Um, even as opposed to Linux, with the PC, uh, it's sort of a happy middle. It's not a whole lot of work. I don't have to know a lot of computer or technical ins and outs. I have to know a few, but not a lot. And uh, I'm I'm very good at acquiring software at little to no cost to me, uh, and and pick, pimping it and making it work well. Uh, you know that. And everybody that's, says, that's well, Linux, every all the software is free, but they don't have a lot of stuff I need. Like basically, I don't use computers. Um, to be cool, you know, it's it's a means, not an not an end to me. The computer I'm using, uh, mm, mm-hmm. I don't need to make a statement about open source freeware by using only Linux. I want to use the stuff that works and allows me to speak to the most thousand people as possible from my windowless bunker at Nerdson Air Base in Wyoming uh, as possible. Burbleson Air Air, Air Base. Um, Basically, okay. I tried. I was gonna do use use my Linux box for one of my for for part of the podcast. I was gonna use it because they have Mumble for it. Um, the thing is, my mixer nobody has made a driver or whatever you have on Linux for my mixer. It's an older mixer, but it kicks ass. I have no reason to replace it. You know, I'd have to go spend three hundred dollars on a new mixer so I could use my fifty dollar computer to run Linux and be able to say. I'm producing this podcast on Linux. No, I have an old XP computer it works with. Why would I want to change that? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm the same way, you know. Um, maybe I don't know enough about Linux, and I do plan on, on – I have a dead computer that I think puppy Linux may be killed. Uh, uh, I don't know about that puppy. 100%. But I, th- I think I'm going to do uh, Ubuntu on it um, eventually and play around with it. I kind of want to try Ubuntu Studio. Uh, maybe it'll work great. I don't know. Um Right now, though, I like to use programs that everybody else uses, if, if anything, because when you make your own media and you're trying to do things, sometimes you hear or see something in somebody else's media and you're like, huh, I wonder how they did that. I'd really like to, to recreate that in my own art. You can go to YouTube, click on it, and I, or, or, or type something in, and I guarantee you'll find yourself a tutorial, um, probably for the same program. That's a walkthrough, step by step. Um, I don't know how many there are for Linux type media creator. I mean, I guess well, I there is a video right editor, now. but someone's saying, "Hey, you could use the video editor on." No, it's not as good as Adobe Premiere. You know, it's not. It's not. I've tried it. It's not. And I know Adobe Premiere inside and fucking out. Why would I want to spend time learning a whole new program when I've spent years getting really good at Premiere? You know why? And I'm not going to go to Windows 8. Windows 8 sucks. I'm going to stay at Windows 7. And my the computer that we're talking to each other on is a Windows XP with one gig of RAM. It's a laptop that would probably cost you 80 bucks or 100 bucks on uh, eBay right now. And I can yeah. get a replacement yeah. on eBay when this one dies. Yeah. Oh, I guess I was wrong. I guess there is uh, a lot of um, tutorials for uh, Linux Multimedia Studio, uh, which is their <laughs> uh, beat producing thing. But um, <laughs> But I guess you're right. Yeah, I, I've spent years and years learning the programs I use now. Uh, I don't know. I feel like an old man when I say that, though. So I don't know. I, I guess it's just my preference right now is Windows using the programs I have, and that might change in the future, but it hasn't changed yet. <laughs> Somebody and, uh, said, "So I said, there's no Linux video editor that's better than Adobe Premiere, and someone said, run it in Wine, LOL, which is like the Windows emulator for Linux. And I'm like, oh, that's going to work well, running an extremely memory-intensive program uh, within an emulator on Linux. They're joking. They're joking, though. But Anna, does, someone says Adobe makes great stuff. It's just so damn expensive. And the thing is, and this is kind of a unique situation, I get Adobe stuff free because I'm a tech writer, but not everybody can do that. You know, it's kind of like I have to, like, rethink things. Like, when I was doing the gun training video with Jared, you know, his thing was, like, basically always be armed at home. And he was, like, you know, we filmed a segment of, like, hiding the gun under your towel to protect it from the moisture in the bathroom while you're showering. And and I said, you know, but he also showed like him holster carrying around the house all the time. And I'm like, I don't do that. I like to wear sweatpants around the house. And, you know, I have 15 loaded guns hidden around my house and there's no kids ever come in my house and the cats can't pull the triggers. And he's like, and I'm like, let's just say that. And that was such a, he's like, 
you know, Michael, not everybody can afford 15 guns. And it was just this total, like, <laughs> let them eat cake kind of moment. And I was like, okay, yeah, yeah. okay. That's why I collaborate with smart people, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> all right, all right, all right, uh, all right. I guess I would say something else, too, but I don't like to Go encourage ahead. things like that. What? Uh, say well, a friend of a friend uh, you, you it, heard about uh, in a magazine. A friend of a friend says... Um, Pretty much any software you might be able to get for free if you're smart enough on the internet uh, without having but to write Nima, it. But Nima, using BitTorrent <clears throat> with I a didn't v- say that. with <laughs> using BitTorrent with a VPN running Pure Block and um, searching a website other than Google that won't track you, like startpage.com, to find things to torrent uh, using private browsing is illegal. Yes. You like how I did that? <laughs> I did. I did. And my response is just yes. Um, yeah. We'll let, we'll let the fiends go from there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, somebody asked if, if Adobe Premiere is in the fiends RSS torrent feed. Ah, no. It? No, it's not. It's only <laughs> stuff we own. Own uh, okay. in the okay. legal sense of the word of what yeah. the government thinks. Yeah. They're legal torrents that will soon become illegal when they outlaw free speech. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah i don't know what a what cd is i guess that's probably a cd that has every torrent in the world on it or something that's you know another thing we're going to start doing is when we release the like five episode um archives of batches of anarchy gumbo and the 10 episode batches of freedom fiends you know we release each one individually but also release uh, at archives of a bunch of them every five and ten episodes five for anarchy gumbo and ten for the fiends um, which may annoy some people they might go oh my god i'm getting too many things but you can actually set up filters in your rss feed in the program to like not download certain things or just set it up so it doesn't automatically download everything and just uh download the things you want from the feed but we're going to start putting the torrent uh i mean the rss feed xml file as it stands at that point each time in that so it's going to be like 10 fiends episodes and a little tiny xml file because if we get droned people aren't going to have access to our file anymore but that xml file people could email or hand around on usb drives or whatever and still torrent because torrenting used to work where it had to reach trackers which were sites like pirate bay and whatever but they can shut most of those down except pirate bay who just seemed fucking unstoppable and i tip my pirate hat to them for that um, oh yeah, but now they work with magnet links, which is what we're posting in RSS feed. It's just a long, long string of numbers, like 128 numbers or something, and letters, and that works without a central tracker. It works a little slower connecting, but once it's connected to other torrents, it works. So it's literally decentralized, literally unstoppable by central scrutinizer and central planning. The only way to really stop it would probably be to shut off all the power. <laughs> which I don't think they're going to do. <laughs> Kill all the power. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they need they need the power themselves. Although uh they can I have power the, without us having power, but right, then all right. the, the slaves grid, the grid would is starve. smart enough to where the White House could still have its movie uh movie screening room and its bowling alley and the rest and of it's, us and the drone factories make fires in the you know, fireplaces. And the drone yeah. factories, and the but the drone factories, yeah. Then but you know, starving cattle, you can't really take much from them for long. So they don't want yeah. us starving like that and in the dark and freezing and complaining and you know the guns they haven't been able to be confiscated being used against their people which would is what would happen if they tried to throw us back to the stone age i'm not mm-hmm. saying i'd mm-hmm. shoot anybody but somebody would you know don't you think if they cut off all the power and and couldn't lie their way out of it and say the iranians did it like if, if the government actually just cut everybody's power except for government buildings and you know Dick Cheney's secret underground bunker. Don't you think it would be open season on cops in inner cities? And don't you think it would be open season on government people in, in you know, redneck places? I mean, I'm not saying well, it's a good thing, but I, I it would guess happen. I would say, it would happen. I, guess I would say if they couldn't lie their way out of it, then... Um, say Iran did it. That then, wouldn't be... And I guess if they turned the power off, it'd be hard to convince people otherwise via the internet. Right. That's another yeah. reason we need to convince as many people now. So when something like right. that happens, they'll just go, oh, the government did this to fuck with me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Yep. Yeah, that's that's the main thing is, is getting people to not believe their lies because that that's the only reason they have the the amount of power they have now is because enough people buy into it. There's enough horizontal enforcement. There's the obedience that that is the other end of the coin. You can have um you can be as tyrannical as you want in your heart, but if nobody will obey you, then you're just you're just the guy that's the bum on the street that cops buy shoes for. Yeah, um, I mean literally like if you know, if every Jew who owned a handgun had shot every soldier that came into their house to try to take them away to the camps, or even you know hit them with a hammer or broke a chair over their head, as Soldier Nietzsche said, it wouldn't have worked, man. I mean, a lot mm-hmm. of people would have died on the spot, but a lot of a lot more people wouldn't have died in the camps. Oh well, here's another thing: uh, the government owns the roads, right? And status are always like, "Well, who will build the roads?" Roads. All right. So here's the thing. I just uh, fell down a worm, 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 wormhole of roads. Right, right. Here's the thing about obedience, right? If the roads were private, uh, you wouldn't even need in in that scenario where the, where the the Jews should have shot the the soldiers coming through their doors. The roads are private. The road owner would just be like, uh, "Yeah, I'm not letting your blitzkrieg war machine on my road. Screw you guys." Which is I why mean, the if government. A, if anything, wants- it'll it'll tear up my concrete and my asphalt. Which is you why the government. Pass. Which is why the government wants drones, because it just gets away from all that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Drones. But who would build the drones? Who would build the without drones? Without the government. Private industry yeah. that would yeah. not be yeah. violent. Yeah. Who would molest my grandma without the government? Without the TSA. Yeah. All right, let's take a little... Uh, here, let me uh, cue up some music here, and let's take another little uh, sales break. We can say break. It's our, show, break. Man. It's our yeah, show, It's our show. It's our let's show. see. Did I play this song yet? Let's see. Did I play this? No, I didn't. This is side B. More beef people. Ugh, I'm so sick of looking at Steve's wedding pics, and I'm all out of passive-aggressive comments. What else am I supposed to do at work all day? Sick of stalking your ex on Facebook? Yeah! Are you all out of cute cats and autocorrect mishaps to lol at? Duh! Freedom Fiends to the rescue! The Fiends now have a blog. Read all about the latest tyranny today. Dream about lip pair. Laugh while Western civilization collapses. Just click on the cat icon to the right of freedomfiends.com. Freedom Fiends blog. Read it! Have you swallowed too much of the state's poison? The Freedom Fiends will stick their fingers down your throat and hold your hair back while you hurl. Check out the new show, The Freedom Fiends Agenda, on Freedom Fiends Radio. Click on the blue Listen link at freedomfiends.com, streaming live every Thursday from 4 to 6 p.m. East Coast, U.S. time on Freedom Fiends Radio at freedomfiends.com. The Freedom Fiends agenda is Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati's fun and feisty chat about market anarchy, self-defense, real money, the digital police state, activism, DIY media, sex pets, and rock and roll. Call in soon before they get droned. Live studio number 307-215-5171 or via Skype to username kittyfeet1. Listen live at freedomfiends.com. That's freedomfiends.com. This is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends. I've been on the World Wide Web since its inception in 1994. I've tried dozens of web providers in that time. The only one that hasn't broken my heart is HostGator. HostGator has unlimited server space, unlimited throughput, and a guaranteed uptime of better than 99.9% for only $150 a year. You can pay a little less elsewhere, but you'll pull out your hair dealing with anyone else. HostGator has great service and unlimited tech support only a phone call away 24-7-365. HostGator is where pros like the Fiends host because we know how to do it right. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the HostGator affiliate link on the right sidebar to sign up today. Delicious dish. Hi, Nima. Mm. How you doing there? Hey. Hi. How you doing? Yeah, that was... Uh, that last one was our version of Jimi Hendrix's Fire done in yeah. the punk style of the day, which the Chili Peppers released three years later in 87 in the style of the day. We're pretty much like that. I mean, I almost think they heard us do the it same, somewhere. The same or, cover? Or the same yeah, Andrew like song? done the same way. I think they may have heard a copy of us or something doing it. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, because we did get some college radio play, so nice. someone probably turned it on to them. Maybe. Or maybe they just went, hey, this song's pretty good, but it should be faster. 
Yeah, yeah. Like we did. Yeah. What was the... Uh, I guess that's just the style of the day, and music is, you know, cyclical it, in the style. It was the style but... of the day. So, I want to talk more about the TSA. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Yep. Um, I was thinking about, you know, my dad, when he was out here visiting me, my 91-year-old dad... I, t- I took him shooting, and he had just the greatest time we've had in a long time. Um, and he did pretty damn well for a 91-year-old guy on a 29-degree freezing sweat snow day shooting a 22 at 25 yards. He, got, he did really well. And we had his target, <clears throat> and we saved it, folded it up, dried it out, folded it up, and he had it in his luggage. And when he got back to New York uh, State, it was gone. TSA stole it out of his luggage. Or somebody did, but they're... I mean, aren't they the only people that are supposed to have access to your luggage? They damn well better be if they're doing what they say they're doing. Because otherwise, somebody could put, you know, something in there that they're trying to stop. So really, the TSA mm-hmm. are the only people who are supposed to have access to it. And they stole his target. <clears throat> mm. And, mm. you know, a lot of the TSA, people from the TSA steal a lot of shit. I mean, somebody was arrested from the TSA for stealing $100,000 worth of jewelry and things out of luggage mm-hmm. over a year's period of time. Yep, happens all the time. Not that <clears throat> a, much, but... A target yeah. isn't intrinsically worth much it was worth sentimentally a lot to him but i was also thinking like do you think there's a directive somewhere from like Cass sunstein of of like anything gun related that isn't expensive enough to file an insurance claim on just steal like Hmm. you don't you don't want to have that we don't want you to have this this sends a bad message Hmm. we don't want people to be able to shoot well we're going to take this (laughs) to to like try to nudge you into compliance maybe maybe yeah it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me there's there's an attack on the idea even the concept of guns and i i fear that it's it's working to some extent i mean as far as from a horizontal enforcement point of view there are young people who who watch movies where people have guns and listen to music where people talk about guns and yet they think they think anybody who has a concealed carry permit is fat, old, white and racist and they think they're just stupid and silly to why would you need a gun? What are you going to do? Save the day, Mr. Superhero Man? <laughs> I'm kind fat, of white, old and pretty not ra- very not racist. Uh and I can prove that I have friends who aren't white that I shoot with cuz it's in the guns and we in our movie. movie. The scene that you called <laughs> Michael's uh rainbow militia or what did you call it it was you and it was you who are middle eastern and a black friend of ours and me and uh, me like it looks like we're doing a firing squad i'm like ready fire and you can't see what we're shooting at and we're three abreast shooting and then we do it like five times with you know it's in the calendar oh the freedom fiends transcontinental militia yeah Asia, yeah. Europe, and Africa. I guess it would be the old world trans. Which I called show. Michael's Brown Army. <laughs> <laughs> Michael's Brown Army, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Nice, yeah. nice. Uh, yeah, but I, I don't know. Maybe there is some kind of ass sunscreen directive or something. Um, th- I don't know if it's as planned or as concerted as that, but it, it's definitely a theme or a meme in the government. Did you see this thing that um, some city is is? Ask, they're doing one of those uh, gun buybacks program. They but can't what, buy it what, back because they never owned it. First of all, yeah, that's that's first of all. But um, oh, here it is. It's in Mass. Oh, of course, it's in Massachusetts, Worcester, Massachusetts. Asking citizens to bring their weapons to the police department next weekend as part of the city's annual Goods for Guns buyback program. In return for the guns, the city will offer gift certificates and a free flu shot. Ew. <laughs> yeah. DJ asked me if we, I wanted to get flu shots the other day. And I was like, you know, I mean, I'm not completely conspiratorial of like they're inserting microchips and compliance, compliance in drugs into our system with that. But it is uh, totally run by a government monopoly of people are the government is used to influence people to do this. All the big pharma companies have payoff arrangements through lobbyists, through getting people elected to, you know, make people get them and encourage people to get them and here's the real thing about it i haven't had a flu shot in seven years i realized when i was saying this to her i haven't had a flu in seven years i've had some colds Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. you can't really do anything about that there's no uh you know but i've not had a full-blown flu since i last had a flu shot or before (laughs) not saying they cause them but just saying i don't need them and we what we decided is she's going to get one because she does get a flu a year 
because she deals with the public constantly. I don't deal with the public. She like, you know, clients come in and they have snot nosed little kids, you know, touching her desk, eating candy, blah, blah, blah. You know, she's shaking hands with people all day. I'm not. And I never get a flu when she gets a flu. So mm. she's going to get one. I'm not. But uh, I, I, I take the whole Dwight Schrute perspective on that. And <laughs> I'd, I'd rather people sneeze on me and expose me to the sickness so my body could naturally build up a thing rather than having heavy metals and a tiny bit of the virus injected yeah. directly into my bloodstream i'd rather acquire it naturally by being out amongst the public which i am often and yeah. then taking uh you know uh vitamin d making sure i eat healthy uh and that kind of stuff um you know especially when i get sick you know if i start to feel that that throat coming on that 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 sore throat um you know i make sure to to put alcohol swimmer's ear in my ear try to kill it keep it from infecting my ear i take some vitamin d this is not medical advice i'm just telling you what i do um and it seems to work <laughs> i want to get, really get yeah sick. and we have to say things like that now because literally like the government will take away your whole website and podcast and blog and everything if you give medical advice mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know yep. so we're trying to but we're doing an ongoing experiment of like being nonviolent anarchists that's our experiment. Let's see how that works. No, we are, will always be nonviolent anarchists, non aggressive anarchists. I mean, if someone tries to knife us, we're going to shoot them. But, uh, you know, we are not advocating violence. We don't like the idea of it. We don't, we don't like militia kind of like, let's take over the government. Um, well, I, I just, I'll just say I'm not involved in that and I don't go anywhere near it. I've read books by those people and found interesting ideas, but I don't think it's going to work and I don't think it's. <laughs> I guess you could say they could say it's ethical because it's self-defense, but I don't want to go there and I don't want to do that. I don't want to die. I don't want to die on, I don't want to live on my knees or die, you know, fighting oppression. I want to fight oppression with my words and my thoughts and educating people. And, but we're obeying all laws as written and being really careful with what we say of like, not even giving you know, like we don't use pictures that other people took a lot on our website. We don't use other people's music in our podcast. We're trying to stop from being CISPA too, because that's what they'll do. They'll say, well, mm -hmm. we don't like these guys, but it's free speech. We can't really take their website down. But, oh, wait, they used a little animated squirrel icon that was owned by AOL in 1994. We can take them down now, you know, so we don't do that kind of stuff. But I really believe that even doing what we're doing, this is all going to become illegal within a few years or, uh, Maybe not by de jure, but de facto, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It may be, and I do appreciate your vigilance in that. Um, it I'm kind of not, goes to the point of paranoia almost, or seems to, or overly cautious, but... But I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I'm, I'm eternally grateful for it, because you actually seem to look ahead and worry about these things, whereas I'm, I'm more of... Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm younger. I'm just like, screw it. I'm I'm gonna say what I want to say and do what I want to do. F the government. They suck. Uh, and you sort of temper me, which is is a good thing. Um, yeah, and you temper me for not the being, other way. I don't know. We work really well together. <laughs> yeah, you know, sort of like the way <laughs> women and men work together. Boston Tea Party said it really well in uh, Women Civilized Men. Yeah, in in uh, in his section on women and guns in Boston's Gun Bible, he talks about. Uh, he talks about, you know, men are on this planet to protect women. Women are on this planet to civilize men. Or not the only reason they're <laughs> here, but that's the main thing, one of the main things they do for each other. And and he said, fortunately or unfortunately, there aren't a lot of men in the world anymore who are good at being men and being a husband or a boyfriend for women and not good at protecting them. Uh, but fortunately, women can protect themselves with a gun. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, men cannot civilize themselves. Men <laughs> without women become, you know, Al Bundy without a wife, even just like farting on the car on the couch and scratching themselves and burping and living in their own filth. Although interesting, uh, if if we're talking in that narrative um and I, I would i would wonder what boston thinks about gay men who would be the opposite of that and in, in, in his view might seem i don't know about in his view but but who would be very clean well dressed uh seem civilized by that kind of definition and the fact that you know the house would be made up they would be responsible that kind of a thing well i was thinking about that while i was saying that um boston has one of the most consistently ethical libertarian views of homosexuals for someone who doesn't like them or feel comfortable around them. 
Um, and I don't want to paraphrase him, but I have invited him several times to come be interviewed on, on the fiends or the gumbo. And he hasn't done it yet. And he was, you know, hanging out in Casper one day and I was hanging out with him and he was like, he was going to do an interview. And then when he got here, he was really tired because he'd had a grueling day and a long drive from wherever he came from. So it hasn't happened yet, but my general understanding from interviews I've read and things I've read and his opinion on it is like, he, you know, basically, okay, there's a thing on the free state Wyoming uh, FAQ, which is open to the public, that part of the board. So one of the questions is like, you know, how do you feel about homosexuals joining free state prod? You know, basically his thing is any race, creed, color, whatever. Um, and his, his pretty much answer was, was, uh, was that gays would be tolerated, but if they're really flamboyant about it, probably never fully accepted by the free state Wyoming membership. Uh, which is probably one reason I'm not a member because uh, I I don't feel that way exactly. Although I generally haven't had a lot of friends who are flamingly flamboyant uh, homosexuals, but I've had a lot of friends who are gay. Uh, I pretty much am, generally don't have a lot of friends who are flamboyantly anything because I like, I like being around people who are more calm about what they do and more comfortable in it and don't have to shove it in the world. Like... I'm a gun guy, but you don't know it when I walk down the street. You know, I don't open carry anymore. I don't have a t-shirt that says guns don't kill people. The government does. I own that t-shirt, but I use it as a lampshade. Um, <laughs> you know, so basically, and he is, you know, he's fully for gays to have the same rights as straights for marriage. But for him, that means the same thing it does to Ron Paul. I don't think the government should be involved in marriage. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So is yeah, that your yeah. answer to your question? Uh, well, yeah. I guess on the other end of the spectrum, though, I, I feel like um, it, maybe it's a gener- generational thing, too, because uh, the Free State New Hampshire project, which seems to be a generation or two younger than the Free State Wyoming folks, uh, gaiety seems to be like a very accepted thing for them. I mean, there's a whole show about being gay and in the, the Free State project. What is it? Flaming. Freedom? And, you know, honestly, I love Dale and I love what he says about liberty and I love his cartoon um, Anarchy in Your Head. But and I listen to his show, but when they go when they go really gay for a long time, I tend to tune out. And I'm a guy who's had a few dicks up my butt. I mean, I'm so <laughs> not homophobic that I was like, well, I got to see what all the fuss is about. Uh, um, uh, but yeah. I just I love women. I mean, I like things and parts and things being put in mouths. And you know, back in the day, on certain drugs in dark room, I mean, things happen. But. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't like hearing an extended conversation about uh-huh. gay rights any more than I would want to yeah. hear an extended podcast about Game of Thrones because I don't like that show and I don't care about it, you know? It's just not your thing. Yeah. And, yeah. Cool, and you know, the big gay dance party, I thought it was really weird that there were so many straight people in drag at it. And I'm thinking, like, I come from San Francisco and lived there 16 years, and my band played a lot of gay clubs. I've had a lot of gay friends. I've been around a lot of gay people. And the the big the gay the straight people in drag at the big gay dance party would not have flown in San Francisco. I mean, gay what straight mean people flown. Straight people mean? can go to gay bars in San Francisco, but if they imitate what they think is the, it'd be kind of like walking into a gay bar in, in San Francisco, and, and yeah, or like walking into a gay bar lisping. Like that's what they do. <laughs> Most gay people don't dress in drag, and a lot of gay bars, it's a really manly thing. You know, and if you like, if a guy walks in in a dress, they kind of vibe him out of there in a lot of places. Really? Yeah. 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 I guess there's the big, hairy, leather clad gay people too, right? Yeah. That's most of what San Francisco is in the public gay scene. I mean, there are really? drag queens and there are, but that's kind of like the scene I hung out with and where we played and where my friends were at was like, that's kind of sissy, man. You know, the fags would be like, ah, I like to lift weights and fuck people over the pool table in a crowded bar while they play ACDC and Kiss really loud and Led Zeppelin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and they put on disco in that bar and like someone would go probably punch the DJ and put on some rock and roll. <laughs> Well, one of the other things I wanted to talk about, as as long as we're on the subject of, uh, well, I guess we got off it on of gay, gay people, you ain't doing it right. <laughs> no, no. Before that, we were talking about women and civilizing men. Although um, I like dressing up in women's clothing and putting things up my butt, still to this day. So I don't know what am I. 
But see, I'm not being sissy about it. I'm I'm being a man turning me into a woman. That's what goes on in my head. Mm. Well, you wrote a book uh, <laughs> from a woman's perspective, didn't you? Where, where, where was, was, first, was first first person? But, oh yeah, uh, I did. I forgot about that. It was my least selling woman. book, "Beautiful Pleasure: The Simple Pleasures of a Complex Girl." Actually, though, that book is written in second person, which is really weird. And I wanted to do it as an experiment. How, how would that? Give me an example. Of a sentence <clears throat> Most books that, are that in first person or third person. Uh, first right. person is uh, like I went to the store. And I went bought, to the store uh, and bought Cocodrill and and some uh, nylons. Okay. And the services I went, of a tranny hooker. Yeah. I went to the store and bought some Benzedrine, uh, Cocodrill, lipstick, and nylons. Okay. Third person Co- is- Cocodrill sounds like a chocolate sex toy. I think it you does. mean crocodile. Crocodile. <laughs> crocodile. Co- 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 crocodile. Okay. Third person is, I went to the- She went- She or he went- He went to the right. store yeah. And bought some uh, yeah. nylons and speed and right, uh, right. not and lipstick. Michael okay, really enjoys person, dressing up like a woman. Right, right. Second person is you. You went to the store and ah, bought some nylons. It's a really right, right, when you right. start reading a book, huh. it's written entirely in second person. It's completely baffling for about four pages, and yeah. then you go, "Why aren't all books like this?" Huh. There are a few books that are well, like this. Um, the Bright Choose Lights, Your Big Own City. Adventure books. Weren't the Choose Your yeah, Own Adventure other books thing. like yep, that? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and I that love was, those. That was my other those example. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So that's your English oh. lesson for the day, folks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, cool beans. But uh, the other thing I was going to mention, I don't remember why what the segue was here, but um, when we were talking about women in Boston and civilizing men and, or, and, and women with guns um, – how do you feel about the treatment of the whores in Hell on Wheels? Horrible. Um, it horrible. was really horrible. And I was wondering, is that historically accurate? Were whores really treated that poorly? Whores are still treated that poorly. I mean, streetwalker well, I whores feel, I feel like are, whores are, are treated that poorly now because of their legal status. Um, but I thought the, argu- the libertarian or the anarchist argument was, uh, look at the horrors at the bunny ranch. They're treated very well and they make six figures and they drive infinities uh, to and from the whorehouse, which is a very posh place and they have a high-end clientele. And that's because in that county they're in, in Nevada, it's completely, um, you know, I guess, re-legalized well, or non-criminalized. No. You have to also look at it like, I mean, if you want to take fiction, look at how horrors are treated in Boardwalk Empire. Have you ever seen that? Which is uh, a little no. later. It's in the 1920s and 30s. But prostitution is definitely illegal there. But there's a house of prostitution run by a woman there. Uh, and the horrors are treated a lot better until the mafia comes in and starts running the place. And then the women are still probably treated better than they are in, uh, in Hell on Wheels. But... Uh, they're taxed and it's it's a protection thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So well, I just feel like all the men in Hell on Wheels, um, especially the more powerful men, uh, have such a they they think of the whores as literally less than horses. There's a scene where he's like, "Yes, a, a whore is worth less than a horse, and but less than the like, blacks and the Irish." Right, but don't they provide such a valuable service? I mean, yes, what would happen? They civilize if, the men. Well, not only that, An but hour if, there at were a time. No, if there were no whorehouse in the Hell on Wheels world, right? In in, in Hell on Wheels, there'd be a lot more fighting. A lot more fighting. There'd probably be gay rapes and gay sex. It'd be like a prison. Um, there'd be. It, I feel like everybody would be less productive, less happy. Morale would be so much worse. I feel like the whores are such an important part of that society and that economy. What what is it? What is it that makes them treat? people treat them that way and think of them that way. Well, what is it? I mean, sweatshop workers are an important part of the sweatshop economy, but they're not treated well. Um, mm-hmm. I think part yeah. of it is that the, the whores weren't very armed. Mm. Yeah. Maybe everybody, that's it. Maybe a lot that's of people are armed, but not the whores. I think mm-hmm. one of them. Nah. I mean, one of them gets, st- do any of them even have guns or even like knives or anything? I mean, they probably have knives so. for food prep, no, but no. they're not uh, there's, carrying there, weapons. There, there's a story arc where one of the whores gets killed. Um, 
and it's it's a big deal and uh lily bell the fair-haired maiden of the west she wants justice for it and i believe rightly so uh but nobody else in the town especially the town security chief and you know the main guy the the head of the railroad um he's like what are we gonna do i don't care about no whore i ain't i ain't care no whore uh and she has to go outside of his power in order to, to seek justice for it. And then people are upset that the guy who killed the whore gets killed. They think it's a tragedy. The German butcher is, is is thinks it's ridiculous and it's a horrible thing that happened that the person who killed the whore was had met the same fate. Yeah. Um, and that just stuck in my craw. I don't know how historically accurate that was. Maybe it is completely. I just seem to remember and getting the feeling, especially from a book called uh, Renegade History, which I, I think I did read the, the chapter on whores, or at least a good portion of it. Um, and he makes the argument that at least in some places, uh, whores and whorehouses, um, they were legitimate businesses and, and pretty much respected as such. You know? Yeah, but only was- in places where it's illegal, they were only – respected because they paid off the police and the police could go get a suck anytime and probably get a big envelope at the end of the week anywhere it's illegal this, that's this the situation. is this is pre-america though this is uh, what i'm talking about is is in the colonial days before well, so there was basically, probably any statute about whores. yeah so basically uh whores were treated bad as soon as the government showed up now mm. the government there isn't that much government in hell on wheels but everyone's coming from a place where there is government to where it's already established that whores are illegal. And, you know, there's no real, like no one to really pay off the way you could the cops because they have a monopoly on violence. So there's a few different scumbags going around trying to get payoffs. Like the, the two Irish brothers who really can't provide any protection. Even they just, um, they took credit for that guy getting killed when they didn't Mm -hmm. do it. Yeah. And then started shaking the whores down for protection with threat of violence and uh didn't do a good job so you know i guess i'm not i'm not trying to say that like the police would do a better job but i guess i'm saying the whores should have been armed Mm, yeah you know really i mean i actually was offered a job one time by mistress mistress ilsa who's the woman who is now married to one of the guys who's the matrix brother director you know the directors Mm -hmm. the two brothers Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. you know the one who's now a cross-dresser possibly is at a sex change operation she Hmm. She started out doing um, like running a dungeon in San Francisco and then moved to L.A. Oh, yeah. and started running the biggest pro dungeon in L.A. and then met this guy and was like, oh, you know, I'm making a million dollars. I mean, she was one of those like uh, I believe that Lady Heather and CSI may be based on her. You know, like Mr. Silsa was like really professional, like paid taxes, ran a legal service, you know, and had like congressmen and movie stars and uh you know, billionaires as clients and was really discreet about it. And she met this one guy and really liked him and moved in with him and married him and moved to Australia. And like, that was a better business move for her and probably a romance move for her than running this incredibly successful business of, you know, whipping men for a living and having, well, she was the madam at that point in LA. She was running the thing and had a stable of women doing it. And before she was big, when she was in San Francisco and doing it on a small scale, she offered me a job once as security for this place, this house she rented where she had a couple of girls doing uh, that kind of work. And it was basically, she wanted me to sit in the other room with a shotgun uh, in case one of the women screamed and needed help. And Hmm. um, I never Hmm. did it because I got another job and I guess she found someone else. She needed someone right away. And I was, I was whatever, but, and it was going to be a shotgun with rock salt in in the buck instead of buckshot now that's kind of weird because i never would recommend that for home defense but in that situation it might work for whorehouse security right (laughs) because you you don't want them to maybe come well because (laughs) she was they might like it um because she was patting them down for weapons too the first time Uh they come or had someone Uh doing that but you know it would be to get you know if someone's getting strangled or something against their will and screaming you'd run in and shoot the guy in the ass with the buckshot and that wouldn't kill you but it would hurt like fuck yeah oh yeah oh yeah and and also i guess uh for you know to protect the whores if he's strangling the whore on top of him you don't yeah want, so you don't you want know, some why, buckshot going through him and also into the whore you know why didn't the whores in hell on wheels take shifts where the of the 10 girls they had there or whatever one of them is always in the little lobby of the tent with you know a 45 or or why don't they hire someone, right. you know, one of the, instead of hiring, instead of paying someone who says, I'm going to kill you if you don't make me give you protection, 
Mm-hmm. Why don't they hire someone who needs a job there who is trustworthy, who could hold a gun and actually give protection while they're working? Yep, yep. I think uh, that and and as a larger theme uh, being a missed opportunity in the show is um, – why is there not a character who's the gunsmith, you know, or at least uh, footage of the shop, the gunsmith shop? Because everybody has guns, and where are they getting their ammo? I mean, Bohannon goes through ammo like it's water. Uh, I doubt he's mail ordering from Chicago. Well, there's, there's people. There's got to be some kind people, of gunsmith there. I mean, you having a problem with suspension of disbelief? But you know, they are bringing kegs of powder. Yeah, that was pre dynamite. They were using black right. powder to like you know blow rocks out of the way to make the railroad. But they probably were selling some of that on the side for. Yeah. yeah, but those guns needed those. Those were bullet guns, not ball guns. You know, not musket guns. But it's it seems to me that there probably is some kind of shop or or you know at the sundry store, at the dry goods store, the general store. Somebody there sells ammo. Yeah, and, you never and, saw and it. Probably you guns. Never saw it. You never see it. And and also, if one exists, which it seems like it does. Um, why is it such a big deal? How how come it's it's like a big new thing when the blacks get armed? I mean, they make money. Why why? How come none of them have bought their own guns yet? And same with the horse. Yeah, I feel like that's a missed opportunity in the show, or or maybe even a problem with suspending disbelief. Um, I guess on the other end of the spectrum, though, because I I I'd felt that way, you know, for the week of watching or two weeks of watching Hell on Wheels, uh, and then last night I was watching South Park, and of course the the spoiled horror video playset episode comes on, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well we need to respect horrors, but uh, I guess maybe if you glorify them like you do, Par- like people did Paris Hilton, maybe that's the other end of the spectrum. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So I think uh, we're wrapping this up, unless you got a little more here on horrors. Um, I'll put that in the no, show notes. But, uh, horrors. Horrors. Horrors and liberty. <laughs> yeah. Should we call it go. that? What was the name I had for this? Oh, why we torrent. I think horrors and liberty will work better. Do do it like um, horrors and liberty Doc, slash Doctor why Strange we Love torrent. or How I Learned to Love the Bomb. Ah. You can do it, do it in the same. Why we why, torrent why? or How I Learned to Love Horrors and Liberty. <laughs> there you go. How there I learned go. to stop worrying about horrors. Or or how about Michael loves to dress like a woman and have things up his butt. Mm. <laughs> mm, my dad might look at this website. But he'll, <laughs> never, he'll never listen to an episode all the way through, I can tell you that. Uh, okay. If you could figure out how to listen. Why yeah. we torrent or how I learned to stop worrying and love the horrors and liberty. Uh it, it it violates the structure to have the and liberty. Just have it be and whores. To love the horse, and lo- if if I lights what? Well, it's it, it, there's not an and. It's not uh, Doctor Strange Love or how I learned to love the bomb and planes. Well, it it's doesn't. Just how I learned to love the I, bomb. I can I can riff a little bit off that. How about why? Sound weird, how about though. why we torrent or how I learned to stop worrying and love the whore liberty, the liberty horrors. There we go. Ah, there you go. The liberty horrors. Well Perfect. Played. Okay. Yeah, that works. Yes. All right. So, um, Worms, man, and I want to thank our studio audience They're playing the home version of the game here on the Fiends. Yay! And you're welcome to stick around and yak. Just don't get us, uh, yeah, droned. Mm, worms. Peace. Worms. Peace. Love the Fiends and want to help out? We do take donations and we put them back into our Liberty Projects. You can make a donation by clicking on the spinning coin on any post. But what if you want to help, but you ain't got no cash? Or you made a donation and you want to help more? Here's how you can help. Download and seed our torrents to help keep us drone-proof. There's a Torrent Club link at the top of FreedomFiends.com. You can also blog the Fiends and share episode links on Facebook, Twitter, and elsewhere. You can rate and review our movies on Amazon. Amazon and IMDb, you can rate and review the Freedom Fiends and Anarchy Gumbo and our songs on iTunes. That really helps a lot. You can buy our movies and share them with friends or give them out as gifts. And one of the best ways to spread liberty is to buy a bunch of Freedom Fiends buttons and give them out as gifts. Wholesale prices are available, and you can also comment on our site or better yet, comment about us on other sites. And please email the site link to all your friends. Thanks for helping spread the Fiends message worldwide to as many Liberty people as you can, especially to those who don't yet get it. You rock. Hello, Freedom Fiends. It's your boy, me from the U.S. Get the U.S. out my bloodstream. I own me and that include indoor fiends. No one won't ask permission and I won't say please. Freedom fans, for fact that I gotta make clear it ain't about- The Freedom Fiends podcast is covered by a Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike 3.0 license. Do what you want with it and spread it around. Tell two friends. 
make copies. Email it to everyone you know. Go on the site and comment. This is a conversation. Every week, we'll have an exciting new episode where Michael W. Dean and Nima Vadati weave their own unique take on the way the world works and how to find your place in it. Available from freedomfiends.com. That's F-R-E-E-D-O-M-F-E-E-N-S dot com. Freedom Fiends is proudly syndicated by Alterati.com and the Liberty Radio Network. Subscribe and tell two friends. And remember, the only power they have is the power you allow them. We're not saying the Freedom Fiends are the one true path to anarchist liberation, but it's a good one. If you want to put your voluntarist money where your mouth is, consider making a donation to the Freedom Fiends. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the spinning coin on any post. Then make a one-time gift via PayPal or set up a monthly contribution of as little as $3. Giving to the Freedom Fiends helps advance education of horizontal liberation throughout the world. The Freedom Fiends. We work hard, so send us some money.